Hello, today I am going to demonstrate a project named Mining of Road Accident Data using K-means clustering algorithm and a priori algorithm. Now about some brief description about road accidents analysis in data mining. Now road and accidents are uncertain and unsure incidents. In today's world, traffic is increasing at a huge rate which in which leads to a large number of road accidents most of the road accidents data analysis use data mining techniques that will focus on identifying the factors that affect the severity of an accident that means by using the data mining or by using the data analysis what it will find is that it will basically find the factors that can affect that particular accident that means that are the severity factors that basically affect or that basically uh, contributes towards the accident. Now association rule mining is one of the popular data mining techniques that identify the correlation in various attributes of the road accident. In this project what we will do is that we will basically use a priori algorithm which is clubbed with the k-means clustering is used to analyze the road accident factors. Now what is k-means clustering algorithm? k-means clustering basically do is that it will basically uh, uh, basically makes the clusters of the similar kinds of conditional patterns into the data set. It is an unsupervised learning technique that means it doesn't need any kind of class parameter for the analysis purpose. Now the algorithm for how k-means algorithm will work is that it will first select or randomly chooses the k data points from the data set. Here the k denotes the number of clusters. Let's suppose we have two number of clusters. Then it will choose randomly choose two points from the data set as an initial centroid. After that it then it assigns each point to the group with the closest centroid. That means it will calculate the distance of each and every other data points with the closest centroid points the distance uh, the distance which is minimum that uh, if the data point is having the distance minimum to the clustered centroid one then it will be grouped into clustered one if the data point is having the minimum distance to the clustered centroid two then it will be grouped wide towards cluster two now after after this this uh, grouping of the instances it will again recalculate the centroids. After that, assign each point to the closest centroid again. This process is continued again and again until there is no change in the position of centroid. That means the centroid positions in the previous iteration and in the next iterations both having the same points, both having the same position. That means no change in the position. Then that point is known as basically the convergence point. And after that, we will we will stop that iteration. And the clusters after that point are basically the optimized or the finalized cluster. Now this cluster data has been uh, or you can say that this grouped data has been provided to the a priori algorithm in order to make the association rules for that data set. Now what is a priori algorithm? A priori algorithm is mostly used for the for finding the frequent patterns or you can say that for generating the rules for the association rules for the frequent patterns. Now a priori algorithm involves frequent item sets which is a set of items appearing together in a given number of database records meeting the user specified threshold. That means what it will do it will basically find out the free item sets from the data set and it will basically uh, those data set uh, those frequent those item sets or the count of those item set is basically matched with the user specified threshold that is known as a minimum support if the count of that particular item is less than the minimum support then we will discard that item if that item is having the value or having the count greater than the minimum support then we will uh, basically remain then that item set will be remain into the frequent item set item uh, patterns or item sets values a priori uses bottom-up search method that creates every single frequent item set this means that to produce a frequent item set of length it must produce all the subsets as need to be frequent that means it will basically creates a combination that that are known as the generation of candidate sets and then each and every combination it will find the count for those combination and match that count with the minimum support value if it is less 
then it will discard that that combination if it is more than the minimum support then it will grab that item set into the next level after that here is one example we have the transaction data set over here and we have a candidate set generation firstly we have a single item that is a b c d and e we have a minimum support here is 56 percent this is basically the support count of each and every item set into that particular transaction set now here in this case only e element that is the e item set is having the value 55 percent which is less than the minimum support which is 56 percent we will discard this item set after that we have second second pattern that is the candidate item set 2 in this we will have the combination of a b a c a d that means combination of these item sets after that we will again find the support for these item sets similarly if it is less than the minimum support we will discard that value and if it is more than or equal to the minimum support we will uh, that value will be retained into the frequent item set pattern similarly a and c value is less and ad combination value is less or uh, these two combinations are basically discarded from this set after that we will if the candidate set 3 generation is possible then we can do if it is not possible then we will not do that after that we will have these value as a finalized value then we will generate the association rule for only those uh, item set which is having the highest support count that is AB combination is having the highest support count which is 65% and CD value is having the highest support count which is 70% now we will find we will make the association rule for AB and CD combination that means A implies to B with having confidence value as 100%. B corresponds to A with having confidence value 92%. Similarly, C corresponds to D having the confidence value. That means the association rule, rule confidence level is 93% and D corresponds to C with respect to the confidence level 87.5%. In this way, we can basically generate the a priori rules. Now the data set or you can say that the flow chart for the whole project is that we will first collect the road accidents data. The data can be available from various government, uh, government uh, accidental government sites. You can collect data from there. After that we need to pre-process that data in order to filter the uh, missing values or some kind of noise from the data set. After that, we'll we'll apply K-means algorithm in order to make the clusters that is cluster 0, 1 up to so on to n, and denotes the value for the number of clusters. If you will find if you will put two, then the number of cluster here will be two. If you will put three, then the number of cluster would be three. After that, this cluster data will be provided to the association rule mining for the uh, for making the rules using the a priori algorithm. After that, we will analyze the performance parameters for both the algorithms now the tool used for this project is that java jdk netbeans with weka as an external library because both the algorithms that is a k-means clustering and a priori algorithm are present in weka now i am going to demonstrate the same project into netbeans what we'll do is that i have created the road accident analysis data set over uh, project over here what we'll do is that I'll right click to the GUI 1.java file and click to the run file button. From this we will browse the data set first. What I'll do is I'm going to select the data set that is a final traffic data set 1.arfs. Now what this data set denotes is that we have the attributes that is in experience attention whether the driver is having a drink or not age mistakes speed of the car vehicle weather condition road site according to these parameters we'll have a class attribute that is uh, that denotes whether uh, this situation corresponds to the accident yes or no after that we'll click to the next button in order to apply or in order to cluster that data now i'll click to the k-means clustering algorithm what it will do is that it has basically done the clustering of the data set like cluster 1 cluster 3 cluster 1 cluster 4 that means we have total of four clusters that is data is divided into four number of clusters into here and the time taken for the clustering of k-means algorithm is 221 and the accuracy of this clustering is 71 percent after that this cluster data has been provided to the 
a priori algorithm for the a priori algorithm we need to put over here the minimum support value and the minimum confidence value let's suppose i have put minimum support is 30 percent and minimum rule confidence level is 40 percent i'll click to the a priori algorithm it will generate the time taken for the a priori generation is 392 milliseconds and here is the basically the item frequent item set which a priori has calculated the the large number uh, the item set a is having the nine items the frequent item set 2 that is l2 is having 10 items 3 is having the 10 items similarly 4 is having 5 5th is having the one item set and the number of rules is that if you have done no mistake and rules you have followed then there is no chance of having the accident similarly if the road condition is good then obvious you can also follow the rules similarly if you followed the rules that means the road condition is also good these are basically some kind of rules over here that that means if mistake is not done and road condition is good then that implies to there is no no case of accident similarly the other rules are also there in this way you can basically analyze or you can basically find the correlation patterns between the accidental data or you can see that between the road accidents data in order to analyze or in order to predict the future like we have uh, weather condition is rainy and road condition is also not good that means that corresponds towards the accident these kind of basically the rules which we can generate from the association rule mining that is the a priori algorithm you can use any other algorithm also for the uh, analysis purpose for this uh, road accident analysis data set thank you so much for listening i hope you have enjoyed or uh, i hope you have learned a lot from this lecture Thank you so much.